our petition, department, excuse me, resolution, was to um, put printers and computers in common areas of Lenny Residence Hall um, to print after hours when the computer lab was closed. Um, another one was to put the feminine hygiene products in the main bathrooms on campus because right now there are none and our campus is 60% female, over 60%. Um, can you talk about it again? As far as this year, we're really kind of, we've only just begun really. Yeah. We have a lot going on and that sounds weird considering we're in November, but when there's, there's not a lot of people on Parliament still and they're all very new, so they're still developing their ideas. Um, we did have one for an ASL interpreter, which we're working on disability services policy. And that's something that Rob actually brought to us and it actually said shed some light on things that we need to take care of as far as our own policies are concerned. Um, the feminine hygiene was, products was passed the same day and it's more an issue of cost. Right now we're working on a bus shelter, a uh, bus shuttle project yeah, at the college. Yeah, actually, that's some information on that. Oh, we do we too, we were at the yeah. rest of the meeting, so we were gonna talk about the, it right the now. The shelter, not the, sh the shuttle. The shuttle? shuttle bus. Yeah. Yeah, it's <coughs> what's gonna happen starting tomorrow. Tomorrow and Tuesday are gonna be trial periods and it's going to officially launch on Wednesday. Um, but RIPTA is providing us a shuttle system to go around campus. Um, it'll be like 15 minute intervals, I'm assuming at nine stops. Some stops will only be drop offs and some will be both pickups and drop offs depending on the flow of traffic. So that's what tomorrow and Tuesday are for, to, to see what kind of traffic flow we have. Um, one stop is- Is that a yes, yes, it's going into effect tomorrow. Okay. No, they're going to run it on Tuesday. I was oh, they're going to run it? Yeah. Even though there's no class? Yep. Oh. Does yes. it cost any money? Um, not to us, not to student government, no. Just give um, it to the writer? Actually, the administration got not one of those time-sensitive grants, so we have to you know, initiate the program before yep. the grant runs out. What time does it start and what time does it end during the day? I believe 8 a.m.? I think it goes 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., depending on the location. Yep, and between certain hours, there will be, I, I think at peak times, there will be nine stops, and after a certain time, they'll, just, they'll, they'll limit it a little bit. Um, one of the, some of the stops on campus include the social work building, the rec center, New Hall, between New Hall and, and Brown. Brown. It's actually going to come into the New Hall loop and do a loop around Brown and go back out. Um, we also have one between the Murray Center and Physical Plant, mm -hmm. so all the central parking lots that are over there. That'll be a drop off. Be, that'll be a drop off mm -hmm. location. There will be um, one at J.P. Adams Library. Yep, behind the library. And then the there will be one by Roberts Hall mm -hmm. and one in A-Lot. Is there a map of this? Anyway? This will be posted somewhere. Probably by tomorrow, it'll be promise. posted somewhere online. I have a map, it's in my dorm room. <laughs> but it's it starts in A-Lot and goes around the campus. Or it starts at Roberts and then goes to A-Lot, goes to the Sherlock, not the Sherlock Center. Social work social building. Social work building. Is it and drop off there? I know that they do. Building? Yeah, I think so. I think, I know that they're definitely I'm doing that. Their concern with the social work building was that um, it was okay. actually a specific concern uh, at nighttime, the people walking back to their cars wherever they parked, and I guess it's not very well lit or campus no, is not really around very much. So, around. yeah, so one of the concerns was actually voiced by your department, and you will have the shuttle stop now. So, wherever you parked your car, you can get a shuttle ride. And there will be signs stating where the shuttle stop is. Um, we're in the process of getting those made, mm -hmm. so it's just in the That'd works. Be cool. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> so, those are some of the things that we're working on this year. Um, is there, there's, I know that there's some people in the room that have specific concerns, so I'm going to shout out to you yeah. right now, because right. you came in here with a mission, so I'm going to let you have it. And your name is Laura, right? My name is Laura Howard. I live in Suite H. Okay. Um, this is something that literally every single person I have talked to has had a problem with. Mm -hmm. Everyone. There has not been one person, including people, like everyone who lives here has a problem with this. It's the sweet trash bins that got eliminated, I don't know why, for what reason, but last year. I know living last year on campus, we were allowed to bring our trash into the suite, and I don't know, like the maintenance workers would just take it out themselves. We would not have to go to the dumpster ourselves and take our trash out. This year, there are no trash bins in the suite, and we have been told over and over again that we're not allowed to even bring our own trash bins, in, bins into the suite. And every reason that I've heard out of every, you know, RA or hall director has been, well, it makes the suite look cluttered and it makes this look, it's gonna make everything unsanitary and blah, blah, blah. Well, now it's in our rooms and we have to come back to our rooms every day and deal with the smell, 
Do other residence halls have trash bins in their suites, or is it just? It's not just this hall. New, new hall does not. Does new hall has them. Trash. New hall we has have them. trash bins that we have to empty ourselves. Have them. I have signatures from people. Yeah, why don't we let her hall. finish what she's saying first, and then we'll, we'll ask her questions. Um, so yeah, this is just a list of names that I got literally within probably about 20 minutes. I got this many names. And Do you mind if I take that? You can, sure. Thank you. And um, quite honestly, I know that this isn't your fault, and I know if you guys you know, have no control over it, but I pay a lot of money to go here, and I know that what I'm saying right now, almost literally every single person that I've talked to feels the same way. I pay a lot of money to go here. I don't want to be had going out in the winter, Taking my own trash out to the bin, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry, but it's its ludicrous. And um, every time I've talked to somebody about it, it's been, don't bother because it's not going to happen. Don't bother because nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's going to try to change it. And it, nothing has happened. Now I have a question for you. And maybe the RAs in the room can jump in for me if they can. Now this means you also can't have your own small personal trash container yet? I don't know if you can, but I do. In my our room, we can. In your in your own personal rooms, you can't yeah. have your own small not trash container, but not in the common area. Right. I just want to clarify, just so I know that for sure. And there are trash cans in the bathroom. Though. There are trash cans There's in the bathroom. Small trash cans by the bathroom. Not only that, but it's bringing up an issue with I know for you guys, especially you guys who are RAs. Um, now it's people are getting written up, people are getting fined for trash that is not their own problem. I know for a fact, Sweet D, you can go in there and check right now. There is a huge pile of trash where the recycling bins are, and just because people are too lazy to bring up, nobody's listening to the rule anyways. People are just throwing their trash in the middle of the suite, and people are getting fined for it, people are getting written up, and I mean, I don't know, but you guys probably don't wanna write people up just for trash, like it's trash. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's something that I think is ridiculous. Yeah, no, um, I live in Suite A, and they throw in their trash in the recycling bins all the time, I'm also a tour guide here on campus, so whenever I showcase my suite, it, I lose people just on the conditions of the room. Right. Because last year when I did tours, we had trash bins in our rooms, and it would it wasn't a problem whether the the cleaning service would come out and take it out or we take it out by ourselves. As long as it was contained in that area, people can see that we are a cleanly location. But now I have had a lot of comments, and I've had had that mention at all uh, for no trash bins in our suite. It's been ridiculous. And it's literally like those two trash bins right there, the green and the blue, they are overflowing with trash. I don't know how many suites. I walked around today to, you know, li look at li the list, every single suite that there possibly can be. And there is trash in most of them. And so you'd want something like that gray bin there? I just want it back to what it used to be. I don't understand. Oh, I just, okay. you know, I mean, there were two of those trash bins in every suite and it's just ridiculous. And I don't want to have to deal with it. And for people to get fined for other people's trash, my friend, sorry, my friend is okay, my friend is getting fined because other people are too lazy and don't bring out their own trash. Mm -hmm. And it's ridiculous. Okay, Nick, you were you first. Uh, go ahead. I, I have the solution. So. Okay, go ahead. I think that, that we should at least have a bin but have to take it out ourselves. I understand it's not maintenance's responsibility um, to take out our own trash. They clean our bathrooms. They do all that. But like, if, even if we just had a, a normal size trash box, so it's also me like you know you you brought this up with our age, you brought this up with hall directors and you kind of getting well it's not it's not going to change just stop talking about it yeah have you talked to Teresa Brown I don't know who to talk to I have not been told anybody to talk to at all well this is the next step coming to student government then what student government can do is student government officers can go to Teresa Brown and say all right why is this the case why was it changed? Was it really necessary to change it? And if it's if in other residence halls it's allowed, why can't it be allowed in Weber? And I, th I think at that point, they could be solved right there talking to Teresa Brown. Say that student government officers then walk out of that office and don't have a resolution. Well, the next step is simple. Parliament can pass a resolution and most likely pass it unanimously. That carries a lot of weight. That carries the weight of the student body. And that resolution doesn't go to Teresa. That resolution goes to her boss. Dr. Gary Penfield, who sits on student government, would also adhere to this concern. And then that carries more weight, and, and it's, it's quite possible that the decision can be, can be reversed, because you know, you've got a petition, this is the residence building. You know, you pay to live here, this, this is your home. And you should be able to, to live here the way you want to live here. And if it's, you know, you have to go outside in the rain and, 
and in, in the snow in the winter to empty a small little gray bin that might be in, in your in your room, that's ridiculous. There should exactly. be a common trash here. And I think you, you've made a case for it here tonight. And I think what student government can do next is look into the issue of three, sir. And if there's no, if it's not addressed there, can probably take it to the next level. But ultimately, I mean, just talk to your student government leaders and, and, and make sure they follow through with it. I mean, this has even motivated you to become part of student yeah. government. <laughs> so I think that if you're, if this is something that's really passionate for you, and I, I understand where you want to go with this, and I think that we, as Nick said, these are the, those are our steps that we're going to take, because he literally said my exact train of thought. Um, I don't foresee it being an issue making this happen again, but there has to be a reason why it was changed, and we do need to find the background as to why it was changed, because it can't just be the way it looks. I keep hearing health issues, but quite health honestly, issues. it's creating more health issues having them in our own rooms than it is having them in the suites. More issues for ants, which I know something personally about. I was in Willard last year, and I was there the day that there were handfuls of ants crawling out of the ceiling. Okay, that, I remember that shit. But no, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's causing more health okay. issues. And I don't want to have to run into my room and have to spray Febreze every time I go in there just because it smells, because our own little trash bins, because we're not allowed to have trash bins in the suites. That works for me. I understand. Um, I think that we can definitely bring this back to Teresa, and it won't be an issue to have this discussion. Does anybody else have something that they want to talk about? Go ahead. It was brought to my attention that uh, on the east side of the campus, that little cafe, they used to accept the meals so the people could get their meals, and apparently they stopped that without warning anybody. Yep. And there's a lot of people that they don't have the time, whether they work there or between class, to run all the way to DDC and so they can get their lunch and run back. Maybe you can find out why and maybe get it reactivated so they can get their meals at their little cafe there. I was under the impression that Donovan meal plan was being accepted at both cafes. No. But, I, I, well, I'm saying that's the impression I was given. Um, but we can look into it and see why it hasn't been done. Yeah, it was actually only at that cafe. It's only at that cafe? Yeah, because uh, I also, I work at the admissions office every lunch period. And and um, it used to, last year when I was here as a freshman, it used to be that I could just go to the galley cafe, get my lunch, and go right back work to admissions. And then without warning, like Rob said, they just changed it to where I have to either use bonus points or I have to walk to Donovan. And since it takes time to walk to Donovan and the lunch rush is there, it also takes time for me to get my meal and then it takes time to walk back. That's too much time more for the my allotted half hour lunch uh, break that I have to get doc pay just for eating lunch, which I feel is ridiculous because this is all Donovan and it's all the same food. So I feel it shouldn't really matter that much how we pay for it if it's all owned by the same location. Do you know when it changed by chance? About two weeks into the semester. Two weeks into this was, semester. I remember it was a Thursday morning. The mid spring, the mi mid September. Sorry. Yeah. Wrong asking. <laughs> um. So we can definitely take that to Mr. Fleming, Mr. Faculty, Vice President. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Let's bring more. Anybody? Okay. That's all you. Faculty, staff, new parking system. Particularly in parking lot C, which was once an open lot, it's now a faculty staff lot, and as we all know, it's left about vacant, half vacant, throughout most of the day. Will that ever be going back to an open lot again? Yeah, um, actually, we spoke to Vice President Gerhardt about that, and I actually, it was at our, uh, one of our lunches that we had with them, and I sat right next to him, and I said, you know, what are we going to do about lot C? And he's like, oh, you know, we'll probably just let students use it. So, I'll email him again. But that's what he said to me in person. Jordan was there. Um, we're he noticed doing? he noticed that you know that it wasn't filled up by faculty, and he kind of started wondering in the middle of the semester why it wasn't, but never really thought to contact we, anybody. Because they have D and E right next door. Yeah. That's, yeah. So right, the day they do that, I'll go out there with a the hammer and knock down the faculty <laughs> side. Let me know. Okay. So for those of you who don't know where parking lot C is, there is Whipple, which is the communications building, and then there's Alger, and then there's Foreman. Please stop. And down. Um, then there's, so it's Whipple, parking lot, Street, Alger Hall, Art Center, Foreman Center, Sappinsley. Mm -hmm. It's that little square parking lot, which was originally made because student government needed more student parking. 
British. Um, it's my administration. And th there is a reason why we've been looking into changing it. And we noticed from the very beginning that it wasn't always full all the time. Our deputy speaker, who can't be here tonight, is supposed to be working on a parking, some sort of parking yeah, resolution. His, well, his idea, or he was directed to sit with his committee at least a couple hours during the day, work on weekdays, and kind of count the cars as they came in and what kind of peak times there were and what times that the spots were empty. So he's supposed to be doing that. So we already kind of have a uh, project, like a study a being board. done. Um, but I believe that something's being put on the agenda for Wednesday. Yes, no? actually, yeah, actually, yeah, he is. There's an, uh, an agenda item for this Wednesday to talk about changing that parking lot over. But I don't know about you guys, but as residents, how do you feel about being in a resident-only parking lot? I think it's terrible. Honestly, I think it's the parking situation is really stupid. Because I still, because I think that class that's still short sure filled in. I'm sorry, because I'm not gonna walk from at 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night when there's no campus PDs from one side of campus to the other. And it's like, I do take my pride in. I know I'm gonna go. Well, you, can, you can park in whatever lot you want after 5 p.m. No, it's after 5 p.m. No, it's only, 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 only residents. That's what it says on every single week. Residents are only allowed to park. By the rest of No, after 5 p.m. Right here. Oh, I have classes okay. starting at 2. Oh. Okay. So and it's still short fill until 9 o'clock at night. So now reinstating, now this is a secondary question based off of what you stated. For you, the shuttle system directly benefits yeah. your current situation, correct? Yeah, because I'm going to end at night, though. I don't know necessarily when it ends. That was the ballpark. I can't guarantee that. Please well, don't quote me. that's why they're going to try it tomorrow. Do, yeah, I would say don't quote me <laughs> on the times that I gave for the shuttle, but I'm just making sure, like, if that was, a, would you consider that a solution for your problem? Towards, if they Done, yeah. yeah, okay. I feel like I have lots of time. something about the shuttle. Go ahead. Um, I only heard about it because where I work, but no, I don't know if any residents know about it, so how are you going to do a trial period for the first two weeks if no one has any idea of what it is or where the stops are or what's going on? That we know. Okay. And we told the Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Gary Penfield, about that on Thursday when we had our meeting with him, that it wasn't well publicized, and that we thought that if they did test run without publicizing it, it would fail. Um, we'll see where that gets us. I think I think the trial run. Um, I was on the parking and traffic committee for six years. I, I think the um, the trial run is more so so they can judge the traffic patterns and the location of the stops based on traffic. To make sure they're not backing up traffic while the bus is stopping. So even if it's not being utilized, it's more for them to judge you know, where the shuttle's going and if, you know if it can get through certain areas at certain times. Because they're doing this no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they have a lot of D and E at two o'clock and four o'clock. All the commuters leaving, and that there's really lots crazy. of jam. That shuttle could be stuck in that. So I think they're trying to figure out you know, how they're going to drive the shuttle around. And there are 18 seated positions in this shuttle, two handicapped, 16 seated for, for everyone else, and room for 24 total standing. Handicapped? Yes. yes. Okay. And there's supposed to be ADAs certified drivers. So they know how to properly uh, secure the wheelchairs. Which I don't believe. So to work correctly, you don't have to be ADA. No, 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 no. But the, the driver, driver does. does. The driver driver driver. Driver. That comes here? Yes, it's a special It's a special company that we've hired. Oh, but they're through RIPTA. Yeah. Through RIPTA, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. We're I working with RIPTA. RIPTA. The I driver think. is okay. uh, outsourced. I thought. We met with the company that's providing the shuttle. And they're also providing the driver, is the impression I'm under? They're providing the drivers, and they're going to, um, what, like in off hours, they're going to park the shuttle in the brown parking lot, and they're going to come fill it with gas anytime it needs gas. So they're taking care of literally everything. Oh, no. Yeah. Timothy. So what I was going to say about the, um, the parking situation, it's come up in RSA a lot in terms of resident concerns, and one of the biggest concerns is what you've been expressing in terms of, well, if I have a class after 9, you know, I don't feel safe walking back. And I think the shuttle service is a great start for that, but you can always, always just call campus police if you don't feel safe about it. And the thing is, is that you live on campus, and I'm, I'm a firm believer that the residents should be parking back there and walking everywhere on campus. That's just something. Granted, I don't have a car, but I, I would like to, I used to have a car, and I would drive to the student union all the time just to go to Don, but it takes away from a valuable spot from not only a resident, but someone who is visiting the college or 
and we're, it's also free. Like, people need to stop complaining it's free. We don't have to register for cars. Now, can somebody please tell me why people don't feel safe walking through the campus other than the un, the not well-lit areas? Because I know that is a major concern. And that's the only reason? That's the only reason? Maybe. And some people, like I know from being an RA, some people's concerns are they push the blue buttons before, and it takes campus police so long to respond that that makes them feel so uncomfortable that they feel like, okay, those options are there, but they're not being utilized the way they should be. So and that's what makes them feel unsafe. So they feel that there needs to be a quicker response time to the sa blue Correct. safety lights. Correct. All right, that's something that we can take back. Um, but and there's enough of them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. But if they, they don't really work, then there's no point. If they don't work and they're not right. getting there on time, then no one's going to want to use them in the first place. All right, I'm going to point to people, and then I'm going to go. I just have a comment on what was just said. Go ahead. Right, as far as East Campus, I know it's not right next to the, all the buildings in East Campus, like Building 7, mm -hmm. so much more building, but parking lot A, there is considered open parking, so campus police won't ticket there no matter what kind of hang tag, what kind of sticker you have. No. No. Residents park A? Can't park a. a. Residents can open. If you have a resident a. sticker, you can't. A, a, a lot is open yeah. parking for anyone. Is, but that yeah. open yeah. parking does not mean residents. Yeah. yeah. Residents are only allowed to park there like at least residents. three times. You just have Campus police does not ticket that lot, though. So to Quentin, well, that that has they will take residents. Yes. They will take residents. Quentin, campus police is only for commuters and faculty. The only time residents well, are allowed to park like guests, somewhere like else that don't on is campus after 5 p.m. Yes. Right, yeah. guests can park in Guests get temporary park. passes. Yeah. We need clarity. So if everybody could clear, uh, say whether or not they agree with this following statement would be appreciated. We need clarification on when there is open parking and what lots there are open parking in, what lots residents are allowed to park in and which ones they're not allowed to park in, and what times of the day ticketing is happening for open parking lots for those if if resident students aren't allowed to park in them, correct? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure that those three statements were correct. And and I, I sent an email to Chief Bo in May with all those questions, and he'll get back to me. Okay. He's been waiting to see how the parking system oh. is working, and since we've only had one full month of it actually being enforced, which I don't know how accurately it's being enforced considering I'm parked in a resident lot right now. Um, if I have a ticket out there, I'll let you know. But dovetailing off of that, when it comes to the faculty staff lots, whether or not you can park in them after five or not at all, it was the case before this new plan went into effect that every faculty staff lot opened up to everybody at 2.30. And the council two years ago, which is the faculty government body, had a resolution brought to it to extend all of those times from 2.30 to 5. And that was voted down by the faculty to extend their own time till 5. So obviously the students don't want all those lots to be at 5 or not park at all. So we definitely need to get clarification on whether or not students can park in factory lots after 5 o'clock, because most of the factory lots are closer to buildings, mm -hmm. um, especially on East Campus. But also, if it's 5 o'clock, well, we should really put it back at 2.30, because both student government and the faculty have been on record in the past saying 2.30 is an appropriate time. If the faculty aren't here at 2.30, unless they're an adjunct, you know, they're, they're full-time faculty, they should be here at 2.30, they should, they should have a parking spot already. Okay. And after a certain time, those spots really need to open up the commuters so they can get close to the building for the night classes. Because it's dark at 4 o'clock. It's okay. dark at 4.30. All right. So I'm going to bring it over to Rob. Then I'm going to bring it back to Tim. Because you have Okay. Go ahead. A lot of the residents in New Hall, as you know, are nurses or social work. Mm -hmm. And they have to travel in. And one of their major concerns also is during the weather, inclement weather. If they have to walk that long, long even during the daytime, So this is partially concerned about snow yeah. removal. No, uh, no, please you clarify. Were asking oh, okay. Reasons. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. I was just making sure that that was. No, no, it's just. We get so far off topic. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All right, hold on. If does it directly relate to what Rob has to say about well, snow removal? We will get there. Tim. Um, I'd like to talk about campus police. So I don't know if you want to do that now or if you want to. Okay. We're going to go to snow removal, campus police. Find your way to parking. Okay. Parking! <laughs> um, just about like why I would prefer to be able to park in open lots. I'm an education major. Mm -hmm. I'm off campus this semester for four of my classes because I teach for four of them. So when I come back, the way practicums work or just because of province traffic coming back, I end up being late for three of my classes every single week because I have to park here and then walk all the way to my class. Okay. So it isn't, it's not like, just
just if some of the open lots were available. Like the would, gray lots? Yeah. That, that, would, that would even benefit you. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. No removal. Nay. It's great that they are located in Brown Hall because essentially they can be here within two minutes regardless of where they are. Um, but I've also noticed that campus police tend to gingerly get their cars to drive over to New Hall when they could easily just walk there. Or if there's an emergency in suite like I had two weeks ago and I needed a someone right away, it took them about ten minutes to get there. Now. They pride themselves on being able to have a quote-unquote two-minute response time, which is what Lieutenant Wilson has repeatedly said. If you guys said. want to take a seat up front, you're more than welcome to join. You don't have to sit back on the radiator. Okay, we won't put you on the spot ever again. <laughs> Drink too, uh, too. All right, go ahead, Tim. Um, and Lieutenant Wilson has said that, you know, we have a two-minute response time. If you need anything, please call us because we can be there anywhere on campus within two minutes. Um, from what I've heard from just two people here today, they have called campus police twice and apparently their new response time is now 10 minutes. Um, so I think it is our, well, I think it would be the duty of student community government to challenge campus police's, um, I guess, what's that word I'm looking for? Call for response time. Yeah, response time. Um, and it's, and it's, not, it's, it's not just their response time, it's, it's, it's their attitude towards students in general that I have a big issue with. Do you feel like it's hard that they are disrespectful towards students, that they, are unhelpful with students, I need more specifics. In terms of, it depends on who you are. Because for me as an RA, they're gonna, they're obviously going to respect me because I have a position on the resident side of campus. They deal with me a lot. But when it comes to normal residents, they really, they don't know how to talk to residents properly. And that's why I was so upset when we got rid of the third shift person that de dealt with just resident students. Like there's no reason, I have, I have no idea why that we don't have someone on that shift. There's nothing else going on across campus except the life that lives on this side of campus during that time. So, yeah. I feel like they're training to be better. Um, certain situations have happened. I search when they have to search around. It takes them two searches before they can find something. If they're doing it correctly the first time, stuff should have been found. And like they're trying to get, like you were saying, I we've had situations with our suite connected to us, and by the time they get to us, there's nothing anyone can do. It's, all, it's done. Nothing can get done. Yeah, we would have, like, <laughs> we would be here. We would all be dead. Okay, so, Harley, go ahead. Um, just to go back to the police first call campus police first but if I am ever in emergency and if I ever was I would not call campus police first at all ever I would call the police first because I don't 
trust the campus police to get there on time or to take it as seriously as a like a real mm. police officer would. As a point of information for you, um, if you called 911 and you were directed to the Bronx police, they would call our campus police and have them come first. And then they would send a driver out from Providence Police as well. My mother works for the police department in Southern Hill. Um, what they do is they communicate. So this is what I've been told. You call 911, there's an emergency at Rhode Island College. Our campus police officers are contacted and see who's gonna be the first responder. They're expected to be on location before the Providence, campus, Providence Police show up. But they will show up. But they will call. show up. They will come. No, don't get me wrong. They will come. But they do contact Rhode Island College campus police officers before they make contact with our campus in the first place. Well, that might be better to begin with because then maybe they'll take it more seriously because they're realizing that I'm calling the police officer first. Okay. You know what I mean? Somebody else had a hand up before you did. So you okay. Go ahead, Rob. Regarding campus police, a uh, couple things I noticed. When we do a fire drills, campus police is out there monitoring, especially the road near Newhall, because cars fly through, as everybody knows. When we had an actual fire there, they never stood there to watch the traffic as people were crossing. They were there. They walked across there, they went inside, came back out, went back inside their office, stayed there. And there was a few people that almost got hit. Just kind of zooming through. These were RAs out there with you guys? Yes, the okay. RAs were out there. But the like RAs the really can't stop the traffic. No, I didn't I say that they could. I was just saying that I, I wish an RA would have said something about someone almost being hit by a car. We're going to go to Tim yeah. and Nick after Yeah, but they were telling the people to push back. Here's the thing. I was, at, I was at the place. It was 3 a.m. It was a fire alarm. Obviously, residents were really upset that they're out there, so they were sitting on the curb. We told them multiple times, but if they want to get hit by a car, they're going to get hit by a car. <laughs> That's just the fact of the matter. That was their own choice to sit there. We told them and instructed them many times. But th the thing is, you have to realize that it was four RAs there and probably about 250 residents that came out of that building. That day. Actually, Tim, that was the thing I was speaking about. Yeah, it was. I was no, I was speaking about the night they lit the things on fire. The fire on fire. Oh, like the four, remember the idea. Ago? Yeah, an advertisement, so we yeah. lit on fire. I'll well, speak of that night. <coughs> the 4 a.m. one, I wasn't out there. I didn't know. Okay, well, is there something else you might want to talk about instead of the seven o'clock session? I just want to echo to what, what was said about the campus police's response time. Is we've had emergencies in the media center where we have, you know, there was the, the terrorist attack two years ago where that kid mm -hmm. came in with a fire extinguisher and charged into the radio station and pulled all the fire alarms, and the guy was a psycho. but. I uh, threatened a bunch of people. Campus police didn't show up for 15 minutes. <laughs> like, a, the fire alarm was pulled, and we called campus police and said, some crazy guy just came in here, pulled the fire alarm, charged into the radio station with a fire extinguisher. Like, it, it, the guy was nuts. Um, and they didn't show up for 15 minutes. And when they did show up, our radio station personnel were, were pointing at the guy that did it. And they were like, oh, oh, oh. And they just, they didn't even care. So, and, and people were really, really angry about that. And there's been other situations, too, where you know, either it's been an alarm or it's been a serious, you know, you know, s serious problem or medical concern where campus police's response time has not been two minutes, it's not been five minutes. Uh, it's, it's one thing when you call and get a room unlocked and it takes them 20 minutes to get there, that's fine. But when there's an actual emergency, when you tell the dispatcher, when you tell the lieutenant on, on the desk, we have an emergency and they take 10 minutes to get there, that's ridiculous and it should never happen. Okay. And I, I'm assuming I'm, I, I have three RAs and one hall director in the room. Do, uh, does everybody agree with that sentiment that it takes too long? Yeah. yeah For the most, like ninety percent of the time, it's too long. They advertise saying like, like call time. us. We have a two okay. minute percent, right. two minute response time, and they have never been to one of my incidents in under five minutes. Okay. Not once. All right. I can't really echo the same sentiment just because I've only worked here for a couple months. So uh, the thing that I've had to respond to, it's never been. I've never had to wait that long, but I've only worked here for a few months. Okay. If you dial 911, they take every call as seriously as the next. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be the same way in campus police, unless it's something small, like opening a door, or my car just got dinged. Okay, that's different. But if somebody calls and says, that I have an emergency, they need to take that seriously every time, and they don't. They're complacent about it. Okay. Because um, they do get a lot of calls. I understand that. Okay. And most of them are, don't, when they get there, don't turn out to be emergencies, mm -hmm. but they, they, they haven't stopped. They need to treat mindset. them like emergencies? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you, everybody feels that has 
dealt with campus police, mm -hmm. but they don't treat those situations as emergencies. They take them as they come. Okay. Um, so we're 45 minutes in. Anything else we'd like to talk about today? Okay, Laura, go ahead. I know um, you by name now. So <laughs> um, I just want to talk about, like, okay, so for probably about the first month of school, there was a broken jar of salsa. I don't know if anyone else remembers this. No, seriously, a broken jar of salsa sitting out there for a month and a half. I'm talking glass, rotten salsa. Like, there's a thing out there right now that's filled with disgusting broccoli and cheddar soup from dawn, like, last Thursday, and it never gets cleaned up, mm -hmm. ever. Like, that sat out there for, like, a month and a half, the salsa, and it was bringing, it's broken glass, like, on the ground. And nothing is ever done about it, and I just see it all the time, and it's always around, like, here, and it's gross, and it's not safe. So you feel, you're concerned about the cleanliness of the ground as well, because of the... I mean, it's just, it's just funny, because, like, they're so concerned about, like, cleanliness and health within the suite, but if there's broken glass and salsa sitting out there, then it's not a big deal. Okay. Now, was it on the walkway, or, like, on the side? It was on the walkway. Okay. It was, like, on the road. I agree with that, because there's been many of times where, like, there's broken glass alcohol bottles, bottles under everywhere. my car, and I'm going to have to back up, and if I get a flat, I'm the one that's going to have to pay for it to get it fixed, to get new tires, but there's no, no one trying to pick up the bottles that somebody's left. Yep. Um, I, can, I can somewhat comment on the, um, the trash in the back lot. Obviously, it's a big issue that we've been experiencing now for, the, for many couple of years now in terms of RSA and res life. Um, and the things that we've been told is that, and it, it does somewhat make sense, is that it's very hard to clean the entire back of L-Lot mm -hmm. only because there's always usually cars back there, whether it's over the weekend or something like that. Um, so we have expressed that concern, and we did that last year. And during times where residents are required to leave campus, so example, during winter break, they'll be, they, they should be doing a clean sweep of the entire place. Um, now, if, there's a, if it's particularly bad or anything like that, um, we've been instructed, you can tell either an RA or you can t go to RSA and express that, and then we can forward it through the proper channels to get that taken care of. Um, but in terms of excessive trash back there, yeah, it's a big problem. But we don't necessarily, the college I don't think has the means to take care of that all. How, all often, is, how often does it get clean? I would assume during all of the summer it's clean, obviously, because no one's back there. Um, Except for the few residents. Yeah, um, and then the next time they probably touch it is probably going to be winter break. Grant, right. I mean, granted, they, we, I know Greg does have like crews that go around, but there's nothing like a good sweep, like a, a street cleaner. And obviously, I don't think they take care of that until winter break. But again, I can't really speak on that. But they can tell us to all kind of like, I feel like during winter time, we, Brown, uh, Brian Lally sends an email to all of us who have to move our cars so they can plow. If they can send us an email to plow, maybe every couple days so there's a storm. They can send us an email maybe two once a month or once every couple months for them to on a Saturday or Sunday, or Sunday to sweep it off. And this place is dead on Saturdays and Sundays. There's no there's barely any cars. And if you choose not to move your car you've gotten an email, there's not like, you know? Okay. Question for the RAs and hall director. Um would students who live here on a Saturday find that inconvenient? Yeah they would yeah, they would right, they wouldn't they, they wouldn't, wouldn't move their car. The only reason why they're going to move the, the snow is because they don't want to get snowed in, so they're going to move it. Okay. When do you, is there a time that you feel would be convenient, or would residents just not do it at all? I feel at any point, they do it during the breaks because absolutely nobody's here. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I feel even if you did it on a Saturday or Sunday, or even like a long weekend when like even more people go home, mm -hmm. there's always going to be those people who either don't get the email because they don't check it in time, or something like that. Um, <laughs> all right. I, so there's really not a more convenient time to do it other than breaks, but resident students would like to see it done more frequently. At least minimal cleaning done more frequently. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because the thing is, there, there's like boxes and stuff back there that can easily be picked up by Gamble's crew. Exactly. So. I mean, I know personally, I've dropped a coffee back there and just and thrown coffee to the wind and gave it. Was like, like you know what, you're down. It's the glass that bothers. It's, it's the, the glass. glass. Okay. Because, because like, I don't want to spend. I have an SUV, and a tire for an SUV is going to be more than a tire for a car because I need the durability. Yeah. So I'm not going to spend that 150 bucks for a tire. So somebody can and it's not just in the parking lot. But if I go and pick up that empty bottle of alcohol, I'm going to get in trouble in the end. So yeah. it's like, exactly. who's going to
going to be, who's going to be allowed to pick them up? I'm also a fellow flip-flop wearer, and that's also dangerous yeah. when you're wearing flip-flops, so I understand. I respect that. I respect that. Um, go ahead, Rob. I have a question. Now, do you think if they did, like, one weekend where everybody parked across from sweet in that parking lot, so they could sweep, that, that would be accepted? Because I know a lot of people would prefer to park over there. Like have a regular schedule, like first weekend of the month. This is the month. This, this is yeah, month. Every week is coming. Everybody I, just, park I, I, I know I wouldn't do that. And the thing is, I don't think we should set a precedence where it's okay to park over there. I every like because the thing is, be like, oh, we parked there last Saturday. Why did I get a ticket today? Like, you know what I mean? No. Yeah. So well, like, you did one day a month. Yes, yeah, everybody parked there. What, what, I'm, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that <coughs> residents be like, well, we parked there last Saturday. Like, I didn't see what the issue was then. But if there's flyers and the RAs and now. Right. What's the difference this weekend? Why can't you just clean it every weekend Saturday? Saturday. Be in the back lot sections. Okay, it could be in that oh. group too. I, I mean, I don't agree with having, it necessarily being it having to be clean every weekend. Um, I don't agree with that either. Um, I think that there does need to be more light cleaning. That way the heavy duty can clean it and the light cleaning can be done less often. I think that there does need to be more light cleaning. That way the heavy duty cleaning needs to be done less often. It's something that we can talk to the physical plan about. I don't, I don't foresee it being an issue to get more light cleaning done on a regular basis. Because I agree, I, honestly, I, will, I drove back here and they're like <coughs> two thirds of that lot is empty. They could clean that part of the lot on any Saturday or Sunday, which granted they have regular employees. Who that have two thirds is usually where the glass is, right? It's not, yeah. It's not right from the building. It's, it's always it's in the back because yeah. it's the farthest away. Yeah. And like I said, if I could, I would pick up a bottle, but I'm going to get you're gonna by an RA, my luck, or some kid security or a home director. Why is there a bottle of alcohol in your hand? Yeah, no, I, I understand. But I think that we all agree, though, that if there was more regular cleaning, that this wouldn't be an issue, correct? Yeah. yeah? So we'll have to check and see what we can do about that. All right, you look like you have another concern. No, I just, I don't know, it's just, like, funny to me that, like, I don't know, I just find it weird that, like, they're allowed to, like, clean, you know what I mean, like, all the lots and stuff, but when it comes to, like, I know I keep bringing up the trash, but it just bothers me so much. That it's such an issue for you know what I mean for somebody to come in and take the trash out, mm -hmm. but no, yeah, that thing of salsa was sitting out there for like a month. <laughs> it was gross. You have to joke around about it. Seriously. Save our friends out there. It's so gross. That's fun. Sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> All right. Um. Any other concerns by anybody else? To open up the floor to everyone. Yeah. All right. What do you guys think about the meal plans this year? Better? They're never, gonna, they're never gonna be perfect, that's the thing. So they should be a little bit better. Um, what do you think about the on the go heated option? Better. Better, yes. Better. I have a question. Yeah. How come in the salad bar, if you're a vegetarian, why is the vegetarian stuff right next to all the stuff that has meat in it? Really good question. And they fall into each other and if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you can't eat the that gun that we've I've argued many a times because they actually uh, fry their fries the in the same batter as they do their chicken patties. It's, yeah, oh. that is, I've worked in a pizza parlor before, and it's it's very hard, you know, the process to change the oil. They could get another one. Yeah, yes, they could. I agree with that. But change it, like changing the oil, it, it's a bit half hour just to change oil back and forth. But so, but people agree that the on the go stuff is better this year than it was last year. Because I know when I used to get it, there was condensation on everything. Yeah. Um, something that was brought up last year was academics and being a resident student and how you feel it affects your academics. Do you guys, does that, is that a major concern for the residents here in this room? Not this time, but it will be. But it will be? Mm -hmm. Advisors are still an issue, I feel like. You and I can be partners on this. Yeah. We get a project that we can work on. I just, I just don't understand. It's, it's very simple. To look at a plan for general education and say you need to take these classes. This is what you need to get done in four years. You should be able to get it done. What are you doing Thursday at twelve? Thursday at twelve, I have class. Probably, I think I have class, but let me know. All right, um, but we're like having, we're having, well, we're I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm baffled because the thing is, is like there are students on the campus who know how the education department or how the edu general education works that can be better advisors than the ones that Rick are advising. 
like I've had residents who have told me that they can't get in touch with their advisor. The classes they've chosen that the advisor has advised them to take isn't the right course for them to take. When really, like, if I mean, it all comes down to the student, in my opinion. If you just looked at it, you could be able to figure it out yourself. But the college should be able to have advisors who can do that. And I've been lucky enough where I've had like department chair as my advisor. Like that's that's great for me. But I'm worried about the, the person who is just like, for example, a friend of mine who's a communications major who is dealing with the department chair there is having a very difficult time with that. So there's there's n there's really no consistency with how academic departments support their students. Okay. And a lot of my friends have just sent an email to their um, their advisors like, can you unblock me? So that they've, they're I've done that multiple times. They've unblocked you. And then so you go and take your classes, whatever you want to take. On the record of academic advising, um, as far as for me, I'm working on a project to change academic advising. And I, Kyla and I are meeting with the Vice President of Academic Affairs, um, Dr. Ron Pitt, on Thursday this week. So I can take some of those concerns to him. And I know he knows all of these things. Believe me, don't get me wrong. He knows all of these things. And he is not the person who directly deals with academic advising, but he's going to guide me in the right direction. Um, and I, yes. Does the council committee still exist, a special committee on academic advising? Or we have an academic affairs committee. No, no, or the, the, the ours? council. Uh, I don't council know. Over, they had a special know. committee on academic advising. I don't know if it still exists. I don't still exists. Exist. I think it was okay. when they were creating the, yeah. the universal hold that it was still there. Because the universal hold is only about five, six years old. It's not that old. It's only been around, I think, as long as I've been a student here. And that means it started 2008, 2009. Yeah, Ooh. Um, I just dated myself. <coughs> anyway, um, so in the time that it's existed, it hasn't had any changes made to it, as far as I know. And the first thing that was changed most recently was the general education requirements. And those are only applied to freshmen, as far as I know. Yes. <laughs> um, but academic advising is something that's important to me, at least. And I know when I was a resident student here on campus, I found, at least for me, my academics were highly affected by my community. So I'm surprised that you guys have no concerns at all. I'm, yes. I'm fortunate to have good resource department. True. We, our advisors are our teachers, and our teachers are, we're, oh, we have to have weekly, we meet with them weekly and talk about classes, and that's why like, it's not a big concern to me because I'm always meeting with my advisor. I about classes and do you think that you're like this might be a general question maybe the RAs have some perspective on it but do you guys get a lot of complaints about people trying to study in their suite and there being issues or concerns or that like not having a comfortable study environment not being able not feeling like they're performing as well academically because they're too focused on being a college kid I know I've done that uh, not necessarily I mean the thing is it's like New Hall has the study room, so I'm assuming New Hall wouldn't be an issue. And yeah. in regards to in regards to the other buildings, when it comes to academic academic failures, it's more of just the student's choice not to study. It's more of just the student's choice not to go to class. Okay. So, Self-inflicted. Yeah, the, the RA staff is encouraging them to go to class, and we, we, you know, obviously since we live in the building, we know kind of who's, who's going to class, and we can kind of tell who's doing well. But in terms of spaces, like, People use this space right here during studies week all the time during the finals week. Um, in regards to suite, like we just we just move furniture around so it's more conducive to study. Um, and then our student orgs here on campus, our and RHH, we host like student stu study groups for during the studies week. So it's really something that I know I don't think I've really seen much of an issue with. Cool. That it, it's a question. I mean, I just wanted to ask. I would go to. As a professional working like that, especially in suite, because it's traditional corridor style that the students don't use their rooms as their study space, because I feel there's just too much distraction anyway with your laptop and TV and stuff like that. So it, like your room itself isn't a conducive study space. So I'm happy to see the students of suite actually using the lounge effectively, even walking to leaving to walk to this meeting, there was like five or six students in the meet, like in the, you know, in the lounge, just studying with books and laptops. So, yeah. I was never that proactive. <laughs> um, now, this is this might be another question. Do the 
library hours here on campus affect where you study here on campus as a resident student? Yes. Yeah. Like, update for that, if there's any way to change that, like PC, because I know half the residents here will go to the PC library because our library is not open or it's not conducive to the time that they study because, especially up across the like, a lot of people are bar like bartenders, <coughs> which they have like later night jobs, so they need something that's open later to meet their needs to study. I agree with you too. My best friends were already last year. And I would definitely go with them to PC Library. Can I go with you? Yeah, well, you're not supposed to be able to, but you can. No, you can. You, you have access to it. Do we? As, as, a home, yeah. as a home library. I didn't know that. Yeah. Come on, go ahead. Wait, this college operates on a budget of hundreds of millions of dollars. How much would it really cost them to have a person year round at the desk to keep that library 24 7? You'd want 24 7? How much would it really cost them to do that? I mean, we'd have to have costs for the energy bills of the building. They'd have to add new line items to their staffing, which you know always is a, a huge song and dance. And for two weeks, it's about 3000 yeah, change. So. It's it about until like 2 a.m. But I think so a, it's a college budget of hundreds of millions, so even if it's 50000 a year, yeah. to, to out, reallocate the resources to do that. If the students want it, the students would use it. If it's, I mean, like what are there's plenty money? of other things that money goes to. I just have, I think also though that they're, I don't know how effective it would be for a school that's largely commuter to stay open later, like budget wise. Like, I think a study needs to be done too as a graduate of RIC and somebody who, as a student here, worked at the library. Like, student the people aren't there late at night. And, um, so I think it comes down to is it would it be effective if only one or two people are in the library at 2 a.m. and they have to staff it with X amount of staff people that doesn't make it okay. cost effective for the school to keep it open. Because I, I, I know from student government from the two weeks that we do around finals, obviously you get to use a lot more, mm -hmm. um, which you can probably vouch for that yeah. a lot of people are in there the, like two or three weeks before finals. but. Even extending it, maybe you know from personal experience working in the library, do you feel that at 10 o'clock it's dead, or do you feel it like, well, let's 9.30, it's dead? Well, I don't work there now. I well, mean, used to. I did as a student, but yeah, it was, you know, any time past pretty much, I felt like 8 o'clock, you know, I felt the people working at the library outnumbered the amount of people in the library. Interesting. Okay. Let's see. I think it might be a little bit different now. From my, from my personal experience and knowing the people who spend a lot of time in the library yeah. all the time. And I'm not saying it's a bad yeah. idea, but I think it's something to look at. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like if it was open later, you would get more people there staying there. So, like, a lot of people thought they didn't know that they could stay, not, I'm not going to pack up all their stuff and go somewhere. Okay. So, they just go to PC anyways, so they don't have to move anything. So, you would even think opening it up until 12 would be better than yeah. keeping it open until 10? Anything would be better. Okay. Even 11. Okay. I see what you mean. People would probably be like, my mom is setting up camp if I have to get up and leave. Yeah, so we're like, that's a fire. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. All right. Um, go ahead, Rob. It may be better if they could keep Fridays open instead of, I believe it's 4 o'clock and lock the doors. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they could keep open later on five or six. At least a couple extra hours on Fridays. Open later on Fridays. Okay. Um, now we, I think we've covered pretty much every topic that we possibly could. Unless there's something that you guys have, or do you have anything, Kyla? No. I no, think we're all. Third. I want avocado in the. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can advocate well, for avocado. Well, there's food advisory council meetings for that. Food service oh, advisory council. Oh, there's food service advisory council meetings. There's. Food 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 I think pepper jack cheese. What's that? Pepper jack? I think so. They have pepper jack in space, but I don't think they do. They had, like Munster and Tim. Tim. Yeah. Could um, could you talk to Donovan to maybe schedule food advisory committee other than Thursday at twelve thirty? Yeah, we can. Because it doesn't make any sense. I can talk to Gianna. <laughs> okay, thank She's you. She's the one who schedules them. So, anyway, what is it? Food, food service advisory committees, FSEC. <laughs> they are on Thursdays, usually from twelve thirty to two or twelve to two. Um, the first one that they ever had was a really big hit. And a lot of people went and complained, and a lot of things were changed. Uh, that's I think when On the Go started. Um, a lot of the that's when it went from Coke to Pepsi. Why? I don't know. 
Um, there were a couple of other things that were brought up. I don't know the specifics. Please don't. I, I wasn't there, so I don't know. But I think a lot of them were um, hours, when for food is available, um, why things are budgeted, the way they are for meals. Because um, I know I've had a student complain to me about why breakfast is so little and lunch is more That's and great. dinner is more. They want it distributed differently. And I asked why, and they were like, well, because if you break it down by this, this, and this, all these items cost this much, and if you wanted a well-rounded breakfast, this is what it is. And I'm just like, okay, that makes no sense to me, but I'll take it. Um, so there were, but there were, all, at that meeting, there were a lot of changes made, or there were at least a lot of opinions made. Um, they started using green products. They opened, there were soups and everything. A lot of those things changed. Go ahead. Online, the hours for the specific hours for the meals mm -hmm. are different than what they practice inside. For instance, today uh, I looked online to see what time lunch went to. Online, it states on Sunday to 3:30. Mm -hmm. So it was just at the three. I rush over there. I just want to grab some drinks. Okay, I'll eat later for dinner. No, the lady said, "No, oh, we're on dinner already." Because they get a little sign with little print. That says inside next cash register, three o'clock to six o'clock, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. But they should at least have it online. Okay. For people like me, when you're in a rush and you don't remember, and you look online real fast, they should at least have it online appropriate. That's just updating the website, so there shouldn't be an issue. Go ahead. Why uh, is I work on Fridays and Sundays? I work my I work I work fourteen hour shifts, and it's like I work. I started at nine. It's like, why are they only open at nine a.m. on Fridays and Sundays? Why can't it be like at eight? So it's like I'm going into work with, I can't grab food for the day because I have to be at work for nine a.m. Okay, yeah. okay. Do you, is the six o'clock evening time a good cutoff? No, I'm here until absolutely. I, 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 I think it's a bad idea for Sundays. Supper at five o'clock. Absolutely. I think it's a bad idea on Sundays, in so my opinion, at least. No, more I don't, residents are here on campus. No, like, I'm sorry, but, like, if there are classes that are going until 10 o'clock at night, then the, then there should be food available when people are getting out of classes. I'm sorry, but, like, like I'm not, like, just to have, like, dinner from, like, what is it, 3.30 till 7.30? Like, 7.30 is ridiculous. This is, I'm sorry, but this is a college campus. Like, people are up until 4 o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah, and I think that's part of the reason why the cafe, that is actually the reason why the cafe is open now until midnight. But you can only have so much pizza every night, no, like, every not night only that, but class. $3 not for a weekend. slice of pizza? Not on weekend. Okay. $3 for a slice of pizza, that's ridiculous. Back in my day, it was $2. <laughs> and what if you run out of bonus points? I yeah. Mean, they should be able to accept more at the other cafe as well. Exactly. Okay. If you don't use your dinner I think they, do ex there. they accept board at... They, they, use, they only accept it at the You get EDC. like what, 250 campus points? You get 125. Well, it depends on your meal. I have a two, I got, I started off with 250. Okay. Where are you now? Do you know? By chance? I have none. Well, I, I, have, none. I have like maybe right? like 75 because I have to go, I get out of work at 11 p.m. at, on so Sundays, Saturdays and Sundays after being work at 9 a.m. I'm hungry, I have to go to the cafe to get food. What time does the cafe open on? They're, I don't think they're open at they all on Saturday. Saturdays they're open. Saturdays they're open. Yeah. What time? Four to ten thirty on Saturdays. On Saturdays and Sundays they close oh. at ten thirty, but See. it's open until twelve thirty every other weekday. Okay. Pepper Jack, Colby Jack, or Cheddar Jack. One of those three Jacks should be in down. You just like Jack. <laughs> Any other major concerns? If there aren't any major, major concerns, I thank you all for coming. We all appreciate your participation. Take food. Take any snacks, beverages you'd like. If you can't go to the dining hall, <laughs> that's where you can get some snacks Perfect. for the evening. All right, have a great night. Thank you for coming, and your participation was more than welcome.